Welcome to the Experiential Education Showcase. Thank you for joining us. This event is hosted by the Experiential Education Center, also known as EEC. And my name is Pam Brown. I'm a coordinator in the EEC. Today, you'll hear from our keynote speaker and six Bristol students discuss the benefits of hands-on learning through their community-based learning and internship experiences. Their presentations were pre-recorded, but as a viewer, you'll have an opportunity to leave feedback in the chat, or if you have any questions after the event, please feel free to reach out to us at the contact information provided at the bottom of the slides. i now like to introduce our keynote speaker, Dr. Matthew Roy, who is the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Career and Civic Engagement at UMass Dartmouth. Dr. Roy will highlight the value of hands-on learning and the impact it had on his career path. Thank you, Pam, and a warm virtual welcome to all. As mentioned, my name is Matt Roy, and I'm the Assistant Vice Chancellor for Career and Civic Engagement at the University of Massachusetts Dartmouth. My role is, is to oversee the operations of the Career Center and the Ladue Center for Civic Engagement. I am also a management professor. I've been asked to speak about the empowering nature of experiential education for, for students, faculty, and community. Experiential education is hands-on learn hands learning and typically consists of internships and community-based learning, also referred to as service learning. I will approach this task by telling you my story and hopefully you'll see how experiential education changed my life and the lives of my students. I'm sure you recognize that over the years there have been hundreds of projects, but in the interest of time, I will share a few examples of what can be done. I grew up in the south end of Fall River, the 10th of 11 children and the first to go to college. I went to Durfee High School and then here to Bristol Community College. This was in 1983 and so half of my classes were downtown near the Omri building and half were here on Ellsbury Street. I distinctly remember one day walking across this campus and, have, and having an aha moment. I stopped, I looked around, and in that moment I knew that I wanted to spend the rest of my life on a college campus. I just felt whole. Thinking of, think about it, most college campuses have a beautiful physical setting, but more importantly, you are surrounded by people who want to learn. Colleges are places where growth always happens. In my experience, that growth can be exponential if we focus less on teaching and more on learning. That's the link to experiential education. The irony here is that my message is that we have to send our students off campus and into the community in order to maximize their learning and community benefit. I'm going to start by talking about internships, and then I'll move then into community-based learning. I was a finance major as an undergraduate, and I did two internships in college, one at a community economic development corporation and one at a bank. I remember being intimidated to speak up in meetings or even anxious when the phone rang. I learned how very different the culture was in those two settings and how culture drove behavior. It was those internships that got me my first professional job after college. That job was at the Raytheon Corporation as a financial analyst. I don't recall the salary, but I remember it being very well, a very well-paying job at the time. Recently, I read a study that students that complete an internship are 50% more likely to get a job offer upon graduation and earn on average $15,000 more per year in that first job. Let me repeat for, emph for emphasis, 50% more likely to have an offer in hand upon graduation and $15,000 more per year. Students, please try to get an internship. Businesses, please sponsor students and in paid internships in your organization. They will inject fresh ideas into your organization and lower your hiring cost. When I was a student here, many of my classes were taught in a traditional manner, what I refer to as chalk and talk. I worked two jobs to pay for my schooling and didn't own a car at the time. I either walked or bum drives or took public transportation. Perhaps the most important learning experience I had was outside of the classroom. 
I used to volunteer in a parish soup kitchen, mostly washing dishes. In the early 1980s, times were tough, and demand was high in the soup kitchen. Consequently, I noticed the shelves to my left when I was at the sink doing dishes were getting very low. There, was much, there wasn't much food to feed the many hungry patrons. I was friendly with many Durfee High School basketball players at the time, former players. This was when Durfee was a basketball powerhouse. So I learned, I leaned on my network and I organized a charity basketball tournament consisting of three Durfee State Championship teams and one team made up mostly of New England Patriots. I was a business major and I learn, learned more about logistics, marketing and promotion, recruitment and finance from that project than from any of my classes that I had taken. I also felt a sense of accomplishment when I saw the shelves restocked because of my efforts. I raised awareness about hunger in, my, in our community and I raised money for the soup kitchen. Most importantly, it was an empowering learning experience. I learned that I could make a difference. Now fast forward a few years. Now I have a PhD in management and I'm teaching business strategy classes in the Midwest. I haven't forgotten my experience with the charity basketball tournament, so I developed my classes as community-based learning. Students are consultants working on local projects. Many of those projects were for nonprofits, and we even did one or two for the Green Bay Packers. One semester, we were consulting for Schneider National Trucking. That's the largest trucking company in the world. You know them. They're the orange trucks that you see on the highway. They had a big problem with truck driver turnover, 100% turnover. So for every truck driver they hired and trained, they lost one. It's, it, it's a hard life and a lonely life, so it was difficult to keep truck drivers. My students group, groups met with focus groups of managers and truck drivers and devised different solutions for this problem. One group of students developed a profit sharing plan for truckers that stayed longer period of, periods of time. Another group suggested that we share the driving and cut down the loneliness. Often, teams of drivers were husband and wife teams. Both of these solutions saved the company millions of dollars in employee turnover, with some of those savings actually going back to the drivers through the new profit sharing plan. This project and many others helped students realize that they could develop real solutions to real problems. Fast forward again. I left that school in the Midwest and moved back home. I have now been at UMass Dartmouth for 21 years, but when I came back, I decided I wanted to make a difference, and the best way to make a difference was through breaking down the ivory tower and sending my students out in the community to work on real problems with community partners who would also teach them real world applications. I was teaching the leadership classes and I would challenge my students to find something in the community that they wanted to change and go and do it. The premise being that leaders are change agents and that we all lead when we serve others. One student group discovered that there were students experiencing food insecurity and opened a food pantry on the UMass Dartmouth campus. Another group wanted to combat a blood shortage at the time and had a blood drive that was so successful that the American Red Cross asked them to develop a manual on how to have a successful campus blood drive. The Red Cross shared that manual with hundreds of colleges around the country and it was used for many years. These students left a legacy of positive change that, and they were in, in also changed in that process. There are dozens of other projects with similar outcomes for both students and community. Fast forward an, another few more years and I was given a much bigger opportunity by Chancellor Emeritus Jean McCormick. That opportunity was to start the Center for Civic Engagement and to train faculty in best practices in community-based learning. 
I have trained between 125 and 150 UMass Dartmouth faculty and also 10 or 12 Bristol Community College faculty over the years. This has resulted in community-based projects involving hundreds of organizations and thousands of students each year. Projects that have resulted in more equitable bus routes, new websites, concerts and fashion shows, teaching children about biology, reading and foreign cultures, or the redesign of local libraries. There is no discipline upon which community-based learning cannot be done and done well with very successful outcomes. We, sur we survey students and community partners each year and the results are extremely positive. Student surveys overwhelm overwhelmingly show that they are not only learning the application of class content, but soft skills like communication and teamwork. The statistics are impressive, but they don't capture the most important aspect of community-based learning. Perhaps the biggest thing that we can give our students, students like Matt Roy, is a paradigm change. You see, most of us in the south coast of Massachusetts grow, grow up trying to make ends meet. We grow up knowing what we don't have. Maybe we don't have a, a nice house or a car or fancy sneakers or in some instances enough food to eat. Community-based learning helps students to see their place in the world differently. It helps them to understand that they have gifts to give and that, more, and that the more that they learn, the more that they will have to share. It's a win, win, win. A win for the student when that paradigm change happens, a win for the faculty because students will retain what they learned, and a win for the community-based organization because a project was completed or a problem was solved. Experiential learning changed my life. It helped me to realize that education does not reside on a piece of paper or in the letters after my name. It is not meant to be locked away in an ivory tower. Learning is meant to be shared with the broader community. Education is meant to make this world a tiny bit better place for all. Thank you, Bristol Community College, for starting me on this journey. Hi everyone, my name is Erin Smith and I'm the coordinator of the Civic Engagement Program here at Bristol Community College. Throughout this academic year, hundreds of students from across many academic disciplines have connected with the Civic Engagement Program through at least one of the program's initiatives and I could not be more excited that you will be able to hear from a few of them today about their experiences. But before I get to that, let me tell you a little bit more about the program. As a concept, it is widely agreed that civic engagement means working to make a difference in the civic life of our communities and developing the combination of knowledge, skills, values, and motivation to make that difference. It means promoting the quality of life in a community through both political and non-political processes. When people are connected and involved, they can exchange ideas, invest in finding solutions, and work to address the issues facing their communities through civilized discourse. This not only strengthens our democracy, but it also breeds personal empowerment on an individual level by helping people feel like they have a say in what goes on in their communities. By uniting under a shared purpose, we build trust, empathy, connections, and are better equipped for tackling the issues. People engaged in their communities tend to be more invested in the health and well-being of those communities. When people give of their time, skills, and knowledge, they exhibit civic leadership by finding ways to positively impact their communities for the common good. They see their role in a larger context beyond only what affects them and their families to what affects society as a whole. The Civic Engagement Program here at Bristol works to promote this culture of social responsibility through creating a practice of community-engaged learning. To that end, the Civic Engagement Program has three areas of focus. Community-based learning, campus voting initiatives, and the recognition of community service leadership. In reference to the last focus area I just mentioned, we will wrap up the current academic year by recognizing and celebrating all of our students who have gone above and beyond in their commitment and service to the community at Student Awards Night. Additionally, we will be launching our campus voting initiatives this summer in preparation for the midterm elections taking place this November. So stay tuned and be on the lookout for that. 
While there is tremendous value in all of the focus areas, both the core and the foundation of the Civic Engagement Program are our community-based learning courses. Community-based learning integrates course content with community engagement. CBL courses serve to enhance students' learning of course content, understanding of the community, and sense of civic agency. This work is based on a reciprocal and mutually beneficial partnership between the class, the college, and community groups. The goal is to address community-identified needs and ultimately create positive social change. Students can engage in this work through either direct engagement or a project-based approach. This could look like signing up to help with the on-campus mobile food market to help fight food insecurity in our community, or working with our local media to create public service announcements that promote nonprofit organizations. Some students have spent time developing wellness programming initiatives for seniors, creating a visual map of community resources, and conducting advocacy work around topics such as criminal justice reform and affordable access to higher education. The opportunities and the topics are vast and varied. Community-based learning is beneficial in a variety of ways. While reading your textbook and engaging with your professor's lectures are invaluable ways of learning, sometimes learning by doing takes an otherwise abstract concept and shows you how it can be applied in a direct and meaningful way. It can deepen your learning and show you how the information could be used in a very real way beyond the classroom itself. Through this assignment, you will develop better understanding of the needs in your community. This creates empathy for those, ex for those whose experiences you do not share, empowers those who are aware and want to make a difference, and provides an opportunity for problem solving and becoming an agent of social change. Additionally, participating in a community-based learning project helps students develop what we know as soft skills, which are versatile skills such as communication, problem solving, teamwork, collaboration, and time management. Through your community-based learning project, you will also be able to network and create opportunities to build your resume. This allows you to market yourself in a different way as you move on in your academic journey or professional career. No matter which path you take after your time at Bristol, whether it's going immediately into a job or furthering your education, soft skills and networking are critical in every area of your life, your personal life, your professional life, and definitely in your current life as a student. Community-based learning courses help cultivate a culture of community awareness and involvement. Giving back to the community is not just a social service, it's a learning experience as well as a valuable part of connecting to your college education. I could definitely keep talking about this work and its value, but now seems like a good time to hand it over to Sadie, Amy, and Isha, who will tell you about their experiences with community-based learning this year. A leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. I wish I had come up with that but it was actually American author John C. Maxwell. Hi everyone, I'm Sadie Clark, a psychology major in my final semester with BCC. In the fall of 2021, I was fortunate enough to learn a little bit more about what that quote means because I was lucky enough to be enrolled in the Community Leadership Honors Seminar. Through this class, I was able to delve into the characteristics that make a good leader and that learned that leadership is not a stagnant role, it's fluid and ever-changing. I grew a deep sense of understanding of why community leadership is so necessary right now. Community is the building blocks of society and is essential to nurture that community. This class also allowed me to examine with a critical lens and identify the root of many of today's problems that directly affect the town I live in. And of course, I explored my strengths as a leader, then learned how to use them to help others. It was through this class I realized my community is wrought with stress and the people need access to resources to help them reduce stress regardless of their income. As a certified yoga and meditation instructor, I realized I can use my skills and training in a service-based capacity to help others. I chose to work with two organizations that mirrored my morals and beliefs for this project. The first was the YMCA, which is a nonprofit committed to strengthening the community by empowering young people, improving the health and well being of people of all ages, and inspiring action in and across the community. During the pandemic, the YMCA realized the need for an online platform to bring their members' mind and body wellness to their homes. Together, we realized the room for an emphasis on mental well-being and created a three-part yoga and meditation video series for an at-home practice, all intending to mitigate the effects of stress. 
I also co-hosted a yoga wellness retreat that offered members a day to rest, renew, and rejuvenate their spirits. The proceeds of that retreat went directly to the annual YMCA fund, which subsidizes memberships for those that cannot afford them. A lot of my research for this project focused not only on the effects of stress in the general community, but also its effects on the female incarcerated population. And at the same time, through the Honors Community Leadership Program, I realized there was plenty of room to develop my skills as a yoga and meditation instructor. That's when I discovered the Prison Yoga Project. Their goal is to reduce violence and build pathways to better mental health in incarcerated populations through yoga and meditation. In partnering with the PYP, I broadened my understanding of trauma and addiction-informed yoga and meditation. I also learned about the philosophies of justice and incarceration and how they apply to yoga and meditation. With that training, I began to develop an online 13-week yoga and meditation program for incarcerated populations. If I could give three pieces of advice to anyone considering this course, they would be to pick something that you love and are passionate about. For probably the first time in your educational career, you can pick any topic you want to explore and how many people actually get that opportunity. Make it interdisciplinary. Allow yourself to be creative and intertwine as many classes as you can for this project. For example, I was able to incorporate what I was learning in statistics for behavioral and social sciences, my yoga and meditation background, and a bunch more to explore and engage in my very own learning. And of course, collaborate and use the BCC network. Bristol Community College is exactly that. They are a community that wants to see you grow and they are so willing to help. Without the input from my fellow classmates, my amazing instructors, Lisa and Aaron, pointing me in a clear direction, and the help of the research staff at the BCC Library, I would have been lost. And off the top of my head, I can think of four clear reasons to enroll in the Community Leadership Honors Seminar right now. Number one, you will never regret taking this course. You will learn so much about yourself and grow both as a student and a person. You are learning skills in a real world way that will serve you for the rest of your life. Number two, this course allows you to explore the things you are passionate about and use them in a way that makes sense to you, no matter how big or small a way that is. And number three, it can set the foundation for further research and development, which I will talk about more in a minute. And of course, number four, it just looks super cool on your resume. <laughs> I cannot emphasize enough the things you will learn in this course, but if I had to pick my biggest takeaways, they would be how I was able to critically look at myself and discover my strengths and how to emphasize and apply them. And also how to work with diverse personalities, using their unique backgrounds and experiences to create stronger and more inclusive solutions. The service project was a really cool way to get out in the real world and learn something. It's a lot different than just sitting around the classroom and talking about it. This course gives you hands-on experience and a chance to see what it's actually like out there. But most of all, I learned to look at a problem through a larger than me lens, dig deeper than just surface level. Thinking back on this course, I realized that it gave me so much more than just three requirements, three credits toward my requirement. I truly realized that I can make an impact. I can be a leader. So now I'm in my final semester at BCC and what's super cool is I've continued the work I started in my community leadership honors seminar. I'm still working on my 13-week yoga and meditation series in hopes to collaborate with the correctional facility so inmates who need it can have access to it. And if that's not enough, I was able to use the groundwork for this project for my culminating honors project. I'm just putting the finishing touches on a book I'm writing called Your One Minute Guide to Breaking Up with Stress, an at-home-based how-to handbook for ridding your daily life of unwanted tension. So back to that quote, as a leader, a leader is one who knows the way, goes the way, and shows the way. This experiential education course taught me just that, to find a solution, learn how to apply it, and inspire others to join me. Thank you.
My name is Amy Melody, and I'm a recent graduate from the Hospitality Management and Event Planning Program at Bristol Community College. I knew without a shadow of a doubt that my passion for the events industry would take me far, as long as I had a strong foundation along with it. While enrolled in the degree program, I was introduced to Sandy and Dave Dennis, the executors of Creative Arts Network Forever which is a nonprofit organization. While my first introduction was in the fall of 2019, my main experience was during the fall 2020 semester and again in fall 2021, while I was enrolled in the community-based learning course. <clears throat> Learning how to manage my time and adapt to real-world scenarios was something the community-based learning course gave to me, which no standard course could. I still reflect on things I learned during this course in my daily life. CAN aims to bring the community together with focus on arts and culture within Forever. In fall 2020, my class and I were onboarded to do a holiday concert and fundraising event with CAN. Little did we know, our world was about to turn upside down. COVID started rearing its ugly head and everything would change rapidly. These times truly were unprecedented. They were scary and stressful. Having to work through new obstacles in the event planning industry, which I had never faced before, was especially challenging with minimal classmate support. I now appreciate the added pressure which I faced by being the main coordinator of this event. During this community-based learning course, I had an epiphany. To no fault but my own, my plate was so overfull that I couldn't carry it anymore. I ended up having this realization in a parking lot one afternoon after being so stressed out that it was affecting my academics, personal life, and sleep schedule. I promised to myself that I would no longer stretch myself thin to make others happy all the time. The world wouldn't implode or end if I turned down an extra task. That realization was so empowering for me. Saying no and knowing your limits and sticking to your boundaries is admirable and something to be proud of. This ability allows you to have balance and offer more quality to the work which you produce. I use this time management and adaptability which I learned through working with CAN and completed my degree in 2021 of December. I have taken all these lessons and applied them to real world. I started my own wedding planning business up in January 2022. Events by Amy Melody is a New Bedford-based business focused on creating unique weddings to suit each individual couple's love story. No two couples are the same, so why should two weddings be? I am so thankful for all the experience I've gained with CAN, and I'm still affiliated with them as we speak. Thank you. My name is Isha Boyd. I am an honor student at Bristol Community College. I'll be graduating this May with my degree in human services. The community-based learning service course was a great foundation to gaining work experience while working in your field. I learned a variety of theories and concepts on how to effectively work within a system. And because of all of these tools, I've had a great deal of confidence in my workplace. My community-based work assignment was with AmeriCorps, a division of United Way of Greater New Bedford, with my host site or work office being at Pace Child Care Works. My duties included case management, facilitating parent cafes, which are therapeutic community groups for parents, nurturing parenting groups, and NBHA on-site play groups. The AmeriCorps program is still in its infancy, so I created a training and resource binder to assist future interns with everything needed to perform their duties, such as sample flyers, referral forms, and other relevant work information. Set firm, short, and long-term goals. Remind yourselves of the motivators or reasons why you decided to further your education, such as maybe your children, or providing a better future for you and your family. Place yourself in the new career and often visualize the things you will be able to do when you graduate. Be sure to use all of the resources the school has available to you. It will strengthen your chances for success and help you to achieve your ultimate goals. 
I gained experience in my degree field through my placement, which makes me confident in applying for future positions. I have obtained a better sense of direction for my career and am grateful for the opportunity to develop professionally. Most of all, I learned how to effectively collaborate with other community-based agencies to service better and serve those in need. I have been accepted to Bridgewater State University for the fall of 2022, and my goal is to graduate with my master's degree in social work. I am a member of the PTK Honor Society and have twice been on the Dean's List. I received the Newman Fellowship Award for 2022 and will continue my community-based work at Bridgewater. I plan to publish a book about living with trauma and open a trauma-based treatment home for teens and young adults. Thank you. Thank you for sharing your experiences. Your impact in the community is inspiring. My name is Maria Friedman and I'm the Internship Program Coordinator in the Experiential Education Center, or EEC for short. I would now like to shift our focus to the Internship Program. I wanted to start off by first providing you with some general info about Bristol's Internship Program. We require that students participating in the program be in good academic standing. Prior to completing their internship, the EEC works closely with students to ensure that they are prepared for success. This includes everything from resume development, interview preparation, conducting a search for internship opportunities, and application assistance. While enrolled in our internship seminar course, students complete a minimum of 120 hours a semester of supervised work in the field, while simultaneously completing the coursework assigned in the internship seminar course. The course explores crucial professional development topics, such as work values, effective workplace communication, management styles, and personality types, to name a few. Here at Bristol, we pride ourselves in supporting students before, during, and after the internship experience and equipping them with tools to build upon and articulate their skill set. Internships are a high impact practice that affords students the opportunity to connect theory and practice. Students benefit from participating in internships in a number of ways. First, Internships are a perfect way for students to determine career fit, especially if they attend on transferring to a four-year institution to earn a bachelor's degree. We always encourage our students to take advantage of an internship now to confirm they are on the right track and to ultimately save time and money. Next, they gain valuable hands-on learning experience, experiences that allow them to apply what they've learned in the classroom to a real-world setting. Internships are an excellent way for students to develop marketable skills and a competitive resume. As our keynote Dr. Roy mentioned earlier, having an internship can increase a student's success with landing a job after finishing college, with 79.9% of eligible interns receiving a job offer in their field, according to a 2019 NACE report. This also contributes to higher starting salaries, thus increasing economic mobility for our students and their families. In addition, a study of employers found that having an internship in the industry is one of the most influential factors in their hiring decisions. Lastly, internships allow students the opportunity to begin networking in their field of study. How great is it that students will leave Bristol already having made connections in the field along with professional references who can speak to their workability when applying for future opportunities. Now I'd like to provide a snapshot of the success of our internship program. Despite the pandemic, we had 35 students participate in internships throughout the summer 2021, fall 21, and spring 2022 semesters. As we learned to live with the pandemic as the new normal, we saw more organizations returning to in-person working, as well as more students seeking out internships, thus increasing our enrollment numbers greatly for spring 2022. The students represented 11 different degree programs and participated in a variety of internship experiences at for-profit, government, and nonprofit organizations. Some students in our program were able to leverage current employment to work with their supervisors to build upon their skill set. We also want to thank our organization partners who were also able to accommodate some of our students by offering remote or hybrid opportunities, allowing our students to continue to gain valuable experience in their field of study. 
I have had the honor and privilege of working with many of the students who have participated in the internship program. And I have seen firsthand how valuable these experiences have been for students and organizations alike. Seeing the students grow from the beginning steps in the process, from creating their resume, exploring potential sites, to seeing them near the end of their internship with newfound confidence and the ability to articulate their strengths and learning has been extremely rewarding. Moreover, hearing organization partners expre express the value of the contributions and efforts of the students has shown that they weren't just the intern, but were a valuable team member to the organization. I'd now like to hand it over to three student presenters, Ken, Carissa, and David, who will share their internship experiences this year. Hello, my name is Kenneth Matthias. I am majoring in communications here at Bristol. I participated in an internship this spring semester at WCVB Channel 5 Boston. The photo on the slide is me with news anchors Maria Stefanos and Ed Harding. As I had mentioned, I was interning at WCVB, which is Boston's news leader in the news media industry. The station keeps people up to the latest on breaking news around New England and nationally. I worked for the station as a sports intern where I logged professional sports games, reviewed highlights, and assisted the sports anchors with a variety of tasks. I also had the opportunity to practice writing rundowns and scripts for the teleprompter for off-air skits. During the class component of the internship with instructor Pam Brown, I really enjoyed the reflective journal assignments that we had to do each week because it had me reflect on the skills that I learned from being at the site. We also worked in class on updating my resume to ensure I'll have a better chance at getting the job I am looking for in the future. Pam was great at clarifying any questions that I had about assignments and made sure that I was meeting the deadlines that were given to me. This is my second time participating in an internship program here at Bristol. Back in the fall semester of 2021, I participated in an internship with Fun 107. From that experience, I was able to land an internship with WCVB. My tips for other Bristol students that are thinking about doing an internship while attending the college is to stay organized by keeping a detailed schedule of priorities. This was especially important for someone like me who was working a separate full-time job and balancing my responsibilities and my internships. It was also important for me that I carved out some time during the week to spend time with my girlfriend and my family. To stand out at your internship, it is important to connect with your fellow co-workers and ask a lot of questions relating to the industry that you are a part of. The skills I gained from being at WCVB were getting comfortable reading scripts from a teleprompter. I also had the chance to work on my writing skills by drafting scripts and rundowns. By talking to my colleagues at the internship, I was able to have a better understanding of the news industry. By gaining hands-on experience, I was able to take what I was learning in my classes and apply it to the internship. Interning allowed me to increase my professional network by connecting with anchors and staff, which will make it easier for me to take the next step forward towards my career. As far as my future goes, I will continue to pursue a job in the news media industry relating to sports, hoping to become a sports anchor one day. Thank you very much. Have a wonderful day. Hello, my name is Carissa Gaborio, and I've been a student at Bristol Community College since 2017. And this May, I will be graduating with an Associates in Science in Office Administration with a concentration in Executive Administration. This spring semester, for one of my free elective courses, I decided to enroll in the internship program to have real life experience as an office admin. I felt as though it would be more beneficial to my learning skills and I could gain more experience, like a simulation to the real world. I chose to intern with the real estate industry because I had previously worked for a friend's mom who owns a real estate franchise. And with the minimal experience I did have, that opportunity is what helped me want to go back to school for office administration. The picture on the slide is me in the office in the agent common area. For my internship site, I chose Remax Right Choice, a real estate company here in Fall River, Massachusetts. Remax agents are dedicated to making clients real estate experiences memorable and enjoyable. 
They have exceptional marketing strategies to help their clients sell their home quickly, and clients will gain access to cutting edge mapping technology, current market stats, and more. This year is also the last year they will be known as Remax. In August, they're ending their franchise and running independently as Right Choice Realty. My internship duties consisted of creating a how-to handbook to educate the other staff to use the software Lone Wolf, a program that organizes their client data and accounts payable. This handbook I created will be helpful because when they transition from franchise to independent business, it will help reduce the broker's training workload. I also took the responsibility for preparing the conferences, formulating data reports, making packets for the staff and their clients, and I helped plan for their final awards night for the Remax franchise. The picture on the slide is the instructional handbook I created for the company. For the class portion of the internship program, there was an assignment that we had to do to develop learning goals, which helped me reflect on the skills I knew I wanted to improve. I enjoyed taking the MBTI assessment test as it helped me better understand my personality and working preferences that allowed me to effectively interact with others in the workplace. I enjoyed writing the journal entries as it helped me to express my feelings about each week's assignment and how they helped me during my internship. I successfully balanced my internship with other responsibilities by developing my time management skills, which is what helped me tremendously. Week to week, I was writing my assignments for each class that I was taking and not looking ahead. I had to compare my work schedule to what was posted on e-learning for assignments each week. I had to figure out what I could get done each night without having to stay up late every night. Each night I would split the workload into two to three hours. I did have some late nights because of the two other classes along with completing my internship hours and having a full-time job. I also have my own home and a dog to take care of. Knowing I had so much on my plate each week, the assignments needed to be divided depending on which days I work late. So the smaller assignments would get done on those days, and if I was getting out of work early, I would start the bigger assignments and finish them on the weekends if needed. While maintaining my school life and working full time, I am also helping plan my sister's wedding and bridal shower. As anyone who's been through the planning process of a wedding, it takes up a lot of your time and needs to be very organized. Being her maid of honor and the older sibling, my sister needed a lot of attention and I wanted to be sure I could be there for everything. Setting a schedule and ensuring my work was done first is what helped me stay on track and from falling behind. The pictures on this slide are of how I would make my lists weekly of my assignments for each class. And the other picture is the group I created on Pinterest to help plan the events for my sister. The biggest skills I gained during my internship, I feel, were developing my oral communication skills because I had to discuss and organize my thoughts before speaking because in my head I had ideas floating but couldn't make them make sense on paper. So being able to communicate effectively about what I thought would be a good strategy made the transition easier to explain. I really had to use critical thinking because when I created the handbook, I had to make the instructions as precise and easy to understand. Another important aspect of the internship was the ability to increase my leadership skills by taking the initiative to manage my own projects, adjusting their stock and storage rooms, and developing a breakdown of their sales volumes to create posters from the last six years to show during their conference meetings. I would highly recommend that other Bristol students take advantage of participating in the internship program before taking on a job in their field of interest, giving yourself time to test the waters. My advice to anyone who does choose to participate in the internship program is that they must do their research about the organization and understand what their company mission is to make sure it's a good fit. Similar to my situation, you will have the ability to develop written and oral communication skills, knowing how to handle situations that arise in, within your field interest or in the organization of your choice. Take in each moment to learn that each decision that you make will lead to the next one. 
The tips that helped me succeed with my internship was asking questions, informing my supervisor of areas that I can provide help in, and which tasks would benefit them to succeed, all while teaching me something new. My goals from here are to focus on my new career in office administration and apply it in my next position from what I've learned in school and during this program. With this being my last year, a job posting was sent to me from a current professor. I applied for the office administrative assistant position with Anthony F. Cadero Insurance Agency in Fall River, Mass, and I was hired during my interview before leaving. I started my new job mid-April and I graduate this coming May. Thank you. Hi, my name is David Castles. I'm a student here at Bristol Community College majoring in engineering technologies and sustainable agriculture. I participated in Bristol's internship program this spring 2022 semester at Westport Conservation Land Trust in the great town of Westport, Mass. The Land Trust acquires and preserves natural resources, farmland, and wildlife areas for the use and enjoyment of present and future generations. They currently have 12 properties around Westport, Massachusetts that are open to the public with nice walking and hiking trails. The trails are pet friendly, so bring your dog down. My internship title was Assistant Manager of Stewardship, overseeing development and maintenance of existing trails. I've even done a ton of bog bridging shown in the photos on the slide and the replacement of decking along wooden bridges. What I really found rewarding was seeing the progress of the trails and properties I've worked on, making them a better walking and hiking experience for all to enjoy. For the internship class component part of the program, one of the assignments in the class was a weekly reflective journal. This was really helpful to look back on my progress from start to finish. It gave me a perspective on how much I grew in such a short time. Being able to be in touch with the instructor, Pamela Brown, on a weekly basis was a welcome relief. She was able to keep us in the class on track with the assignments. When I first connected with the EEC at Bristol, I really appreciated Maria Friedman and the supportive staff that were there for me. They were there for me from resume building to helping me secure an internship to even making sure I was comfortable going forward. Creating a schedule is one of my greatest allies in this whole internship experience. It's certainly a tough task maintaining and keeping a juggle on school, my internship, and my personal life. Make a plan and stick with it, I say. Another tip for success is getting creative when handling your work. Maybe showing up early gives you an edge. Being able to jump on the day always puts you in the right mindset. Don't be afraid to take an internship. Life is about taking risks. A lot of those times, those risks pay more than money does. Connections are one of the most valuable things you can get out of an internship experience. From my internship, I was able to grow my knowledge even on my first day. On that first day, I was identifying and removing the invasive multi-floor rows from the trail systems. From building my leadership skills, I would on occasion be able to lead a team of high school students on their senior projects, helping with the bog bridging systems and with a hands-on approach to working in the woods. I took responsibility by meeting deadlines within a certain timeline, from measuring land plots and creating simple CAD drawings to getting sound on on my own to do trail maintenance. Being able to lead that team of high schoolers as well as working with the volunteers of the community. Shout out to the Tuesday trail team. <laughs> Being able to take criticism and advice from my senior members of my land trust allowed me to rethink or rework any problems that may have occurred. The creativity to go on a property owned by the trust and recreate it through a computer aided drawing to show the members of the trust board what the facilities wanted to change or work on. On the side, check out a sample of my internship. I created this drawing. My internship was a rewarding and fulfilling journey to take while I was still at Bristol. From the connections you make to the hard work you do, it felt good at the end of each day. If I had any advice for an incoming Bristol student, it would be to participate in an internship because the experience gave me the confidence to jump out into my field of study. Showing up to your internship early, making a lasting impression, and working hard. You never know who you're working for. It might just lead to a new opportunity. As far as my future plans are, it's to be in the Army Corps of Engineers working on civilian projects, either on bridge design or even as a National Park Ranger. Thank you.
That concludes our presentations. The EEC staff would like to take this time to thank our presenters for the valuable information that you shared. Thank you to our viewers for attending the event. We'd also like to thank our community partners and Bristol faculty and staff that continue to engage in and support our department's programs. We'd also, of course, like to thank Bristol's Marketing and Communications Department for helping us coordinate this event. To access this event recording and for additional student bios, please visit the link on the slide. For anyone that's interested in staying up to date on the EEC programs that we discussed today, you can follow us on social media, on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram at EEC Bristol. Thank you and have a good night.